Hello, and thank you all for being here today. My name is Phoebe Dosher. I'm a member of the Class of 2022 and the Bold Council. The Bold Council represents all graduates of the last 10 years and works to enhance the connection between young alumni and Gettysburg College. We're excited to be co-hosting the Alumni J Term along with the Office of Alumni Relations. So we're going to get started with the program. I'm going to start by introducing our presenter today, Andy Hughes. Andy is the executive director of the Garthwaite Leadership Center at Gettysburg College. For almost 15 years, Andy has worked with hundreds of students, professionals, and organizations at Gettysburg, inspiring them to perform to their best ability. He is a passionate Tottenham Hotspurs football club supporter, an avid kayaker and hiker, and loves visiting his nephews and nieces. Andy lives in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with his partner, Annie, and dog, Shelby. So Andy, or Andy take it away. Thanks so much, Phoebe. And um, just a big shout out to the Bold Council and to our alumni relations department for putting this on. To your, your point, Pam, this is such a good idea. And it's a pleasure to be a part of this, uh, along with many of our coaches and clients who you'll get a chance to meet in a moment. Um, but much of what we do at the GLC is create an environment and space for leadership learning. And I have to lean into that a little bit, even though we're on the Zoom. And I'd love to do a, a quick check-in or to, to get into some connection before content, right? We're all part of the Gettysburg family. So um, what I'd love you to do, I'm going to put in the chat uh, three different questions and uh, when when you're ready, if anyone's ready, feel free to just unmute. You don't have to un undo your camera and uh, just share a little bit about yourself. So I'm going to ask you to just say where you're calling in from. What's What was your first, res first year residence hall, if you can remember, which I'm sure you can. And then uh, what interested you in this session? Okay, so I'm going to pop those questions in the chat. And any one of us can go ahead and get started. So who wants to kick us off here? And whoever goes, if you just call someone else's name on the call, and then they'll go next, and we'll keep that chain going. All right, Lisa, welcome. The faceless Lisa. Sorry, I've had a day. I'm not fit for human consumption right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No worries. Welcome. So I'm calling from Huntington Bay, New York, where it has uh, been pouring all day. And it's while the temperature has gone up, it is still kind of wickedly nasty. <laughs> um, I'm class of 1984. Um, and my first year residence hall was Stein. And which was kind of a nightmare because they were building the library at the time. So it was a gigundous mosh pit. And I guess what interested me in this session was that I've been wanting to learn more about the GLC and how to um, better utilize it or become part of it. So. Great. Well, welcome. Thank you, Lisa. Who do you want to go next? Oh, Jacqueline, you're right there. I knew it. I was like prepared. I just had a sneaking suspicion it was going to be me. So, hey, y'all. Um, I'm Jacqueline Frost in class of 2010. I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. I lived in Paul Hall, so just next to Stone. Um, and what interested me about the session is as the jargon Andy uses, I am a client. Um, and I am very interested in learning how to further engage with the GLC because I think it's a pretty great resource for alum. And so I've been really interested in the J term. And involved with that, I just presented a session last night. So I figured I'd hop on this and keep the Gettysburg box going. Um, I'm going to toss it to Brian because he's so excited and he has <laughs> tons of PR practice. So over to you. <laughs> Jack, I need, I need to be careful with my hand gestures there. I was excited about you keeping the momentum uh, for Gettysburg. And I missed a great opportunity to say hello to Lisa. It's great to hear your voice, Lisa. Um, but I'll, I'll quickly share. So uh, my name is Brian Norsinger. I was class of 2001. I am calling in from the beautiful, uh, not so sunny part right now, uh, New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. So just outside of Harrisburg. My first year residence hall was Stein. Also, Lisa, I was second floor. Um, and what interested me about this session, I 
could not be more proud of the college and specifically the fact that the GLC exists. And I believe the programming that Andy and the team have built, um, you know, well beyond simply, you know, this this one particular program that we're speaking of today um, is, is very unique uh, kind of in higher ed today. And so the fact that we make a commitment to young alumni uh, to help continue lifelong education uh, is something I think is very special. So to be here uh, today in support of that is, is something I'm very happy to do. Great, thank you. Oh, I have to, okay. So I will toss it to Charles. I, <clears throat> I thought it'd be coming my way. Thanks a lot, Brian, I appreciate it. Well, my name is Charles Hagen, um, class of 2020. So graduated just at the beginning of COVID, unfortunately, during that time. So that was the beginning of the year that flipped everything on its head. Um, but I'm calling from Dallas, Texas right now, which uh, I've been here for about two years now working for AT&T. Uh, my first year residence hall uh, was Patrick Hall. I was second floor, 204. And what interests about me this session today, I was heavily involved with the GLC um, and working with Andy Hughes all the time when I was in college. And I went through the, and I did the certificate and I got to speak about my experience at the end. And I came back as a sophomore and I became a group facilitator and I would come back with the GLC and I wanted to give back um, because I had a phenomenal experience during that time. And I've, I've been looking to get more involved. And I had this great uh, opportunity to be a client of, of the great Brian that has just spoken just a second ago. And I had a fantastic experience. And I can't wait to talk about it today with you guys. And I'll, I'll popcorn Coach Cantelli after this. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Um, like Lisa, uh, well, first I'm Carol and I'm, I'm hailing from Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania, where I lived after, um, gosh, it's been 30 years now here, which is crazy. Um, but I also like Lisa, I lived in Stein Hall and Lisa, we were in Stein Hall at the same time. Cause I lived there my sophomore year as well. We were um, so indeed. Two years in lovely Stein Hall. And I do remember the library construction going on. <laughs> um, so I'm um, also enamored with the GLC and what it does. And um, like Charles just indicated and Brian, I've been involved with the GLC with um, through Andy um, asking me to partake in some of his seminars while um, while I was still gainfully employed by Gettysburg. I've, I'm on my second year of retirement. Um, and I, I just, <laughs> thank you. I just love what it stands for. Um, I love the way they view leadership. And um, I've also had my teams partake in the programming and had Andy come meet with my teams to enhance their experience and their growth. And as Charles put it so well, um, having the opportunity to continue my involvement with this program is um, really one of my great joys of staying connected to the college. I can't think of a better way to continue to foster relationships with alumni, discuss leadership, and um, be of some somewhat of an assistance in in helping people reach their their journey and and their goals. So it's wonderful to be here tonight and and talk with all of you. And I will pass it on to Sarah. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Sarah Cardwell, class of 2015. I also lived in Stein, maybe a, a little bit later after Carol and Lisa. Um, let's see. I'm from Philadelphia, so the Eagles, very depressing, but enjoying uh, seeing uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Um, but and Jason, see. take his shirt off, right? <laughs> yes, I loved it. Oh, it was great. <laughs> um, let's see. I was involved in the Bold Council for a bit, and I've stepped away from engagement from Gettysburg for a little bit. So I'm loving seeing these J term stuff pop up. Um, tangentially related to the GLC while a student, so I understand the great work they do. Um, and you know, in my job, I work at Drexel University for the business school in development. Um, I'm managing a small team now and having a lot of, you know, access traveling with the president and various deans. So I think it's very important to continue to develop ourselves professionally and as leaders. Um, I'm a little bit younger when I'm engaging with leadership. Um, so this is kind of one of the things I wanted to check out and 
see what other Gettysburg alums are, you know, sharing trends and leadership, stuff like that. So wanted to hear more about it. So thank you, Andy, for organizing it. And I guess Phoebe from the Bowl Council, it's awesome. Supposed to follow directions. Um, Sam, I think don't think you went. No, I haven't yet. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm coming from Boston, Mass. Today, um, it, it's not snowing, but it snowed last night. Um, so that's fun. And I honestly forget the questions. But while I'm pulling up my chat box, crazy story. I just came from the gym and I met a 2012 alum. Like we were just walking past each other. I'm wearing my like Gettysburg sweatshirt and she was like I saw the big G with the bright colors and new and so okay now I have it up but I thought that was ironic because I was attending this right after but my first year residence hall was Huber um which I know is like the, the newest one so I was very fortunate and I am interested in the session because I worked um with the GLC and got to work with Andy for three years when I was at Gettysburg as a leadership mentor um and I just finished grad school in 2023 so I saw this and I was like this is an awesome way for me to get back into um the realm of Gettysburg and also um I just love Andy Hughes and all the work that the GLC does so I was like of course I gotta come pop in and say hello but with that said, um, I'm going to pass it to Diana. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I thought I lost my audio capabilities. Um, hi, I'm Diana. I'm calling from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and my first year residence hall was Hanson. I think it's the best one. Um in my opinion, I went to school with Phoebe. Um, so it's lovely to see you here. <laughs> um, and yeah, now I work in the Center for Global Education at Gettysburg College. So if anybody has studied abroad, that's the office I'm working in. Um, and so I, I've i seen a lot of these DLC sessions popping up, leadership sessions popping up, and I never got involved with GLC as a student. And so I I know, crazy. Um, so I run into Andy all the time and I don't know why I never got involved, but it's better late than never. Um, so I figured I would, this would be a good introduction session and um, I can see how I can incorporate more leadership skills maybe into my current role and whatever the future has for me. So thank you for the session. I appreciate it. Uh, did I, I lost connection a little bit? So I did That's Jackman. Okay. Go? Yeah, Diana. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, I think we just have Pam to go, right? Yeah, I think I think it's me. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just finishing up. Um, I'm Pam Myman. I graduated in the class of 1977, so I got you all beat. Um, I am from Berwyn, Pennsylvania, a far western suburb of Philadelphia in Chester County. My uh, freshman year, I lived in Uber Hall, and one of my first friends that I met was Janet Morgan Riggs, and we graduated together, um, and we were friends all through college and now. Um, and I wanted to hear, you know, I've heard about the D DLC, but I just wanted to kind of learn more about it and start to get more involved again with the college. I was very, very involved for years. Um, I was president of the Philadelphia Alumni Club uh, for years, treasurer of the Alumni Association, a whole bunch of stuff um, on the committee that um, did the study for the Alumni House, which is, as you know, has been there now for a bit, it used to be the old Poly Sci building. Um, the library was not in the middle of Stein Lake when I was there. It was over like kind of near where Brewa um, was opposite like I don't know, the, the quad area where Gladfelder is, you know, just opposite there. But anyway, so I just wanted to get more involved and I've had such a great experience at Gettysburg. I still see a lot of my friends, a bunch still live around here in the Philadelphia suburbs. And I just wanted to see what was going on with the GLC. So I appreciate being able to um, attend this. Well, I'm so glad you did, Pam, and to, to all of you for, for joining us. You know, our 
uh, program for today, let me do a, a quick little framing of what we're hoping to accomplish to meet many of your needs that you, the, the reasons why you jumped in. Um, and then we're going to get into some quick trivia. So I wanted to make this somewhat engaging. So just kind of get ready for that part. Um, our focus today is to share an opportunity for alumni to receive free leadership coaching. And we'll talk a little bit about sort of how that happens, why it happens, what the benefits are, and hear from our coaches and our clients. Um, but let me talk a little bit about the, the context for that. So at the GLC, it's our mission to empower students, alumni, and employees to practice effective um, and uh, enduring leadership. And we do that in a number of ways. Our primary audience are students, right? recognizing we are an undergraduate organization. But we realize that in terms of looking at leadership over the lifespan, some of the most significant leadership development moments happen when you graduate through your kind of first 10 to 20 years out of college. And so since the inception of the GLC back in 2010, we said, why don't we do something that not many other colleges and universities do and provide leadership development for alumni as well. So we've been experimenting with a number of different programs and now we've launched uh, for a number of years now, a free coaching service. And, and so we wanted to give you a taste of what that is. And so folks can engage in this coaching program as a client, which is someone who is being coached or as a coach, who is someone who is trained to be a coach. So no, no matter if you are five years out of school or 30 years out of school, you can participate and get engaged uh, in this program in, in one of those ways, right? Um, and we can answer any questions you have about how to connect there. So what we're gonna do tonight is uh, we're gonna do a quick trivia to give you a sense of what, what coaching is and why it's important in the field of leadership development. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about um, how we look at coaching here at the GLC. We'll hear from our coaches to share what is it that they actually do with their clients and then hear from, from Charles and Jacqueline their experience, because I think that's that's how we really connect to what this what this phenomenon is. At the end, I want to make sure that we'll we'll give you a sense of how how to get involved and how to connect in the program. So does that sound like a plan? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here and in the chat or using audio, please respond to these trivia questions. I've got five questions. Um, the only the only prize is pride itself, um, but sometimes that can be uh, very powerful. Okay, so here is the first question. True or false? coaching is the most used leadership development method in organizations today. You know, could be self-assessments, workshops, training. Is coaching the most or not? What do we say? Okay, Sarah's weighed in with true, lots of true. Oh my gosh, this, this, this crew is so small. That is correct. So across all the different ways that folks can learn leadership, coaching, which is still a relatively new practice, really started in the late 90s, so not that old, has now quickly become the most used development tool. Okay, let's go question two here. Now, thinking about its market size, right? How much, how much gen generally is it? Is the what is the, the projected market size for the coaching industry this year in 2024? Would you say that it's 2 billion, 5 billion, 10 billion, or 20 billion? What are we saying in the chat here? Okay. Some five bills, some three bills, 10. Well, I tell you what, folks, it's actually 20 billion. So this industry continues to grow, and that is the projected market size. Last year it was fifteen billion. So now we're at uh, we're at twenty. Okay. So question number three: 
thinking about how broad it is, how many certified coaches are there? And by certified, that means that, that, that you've gone through some sort of formal licensed training across uh, that's recognized across the, the, the globe. So what are we saying here? Looks like a couple of 25,000. Okay, Lisa, we've got 100,000 and 50,000. Well, I'm going to give the, the the prize here to both Lisa and Pam. It's about 100,000 coaches that exist across, across the world. Majority of those are in the US, but Europe really is the second largest market for coaches and, and then beyond. But I think there are many more coaches that you know aren't necessarily certified, and that's okay. It's more folks as part of the community, but that's what we're we're looking at there. Okay, two more questions here. This one's interesting. What's the average age of a coaching client? Would you say? Is it sort of that 25, 30 range? All right. Looking like. Looks like the popular answer is number two. And that that is correct, right? It's generally uh, the average age is between 35 and 44, um, which has changed a lot. It used to be answer number three or number four because of executive coaching was really the first type of coaching to emerge. And that is typically for senior leaders our goal at the GLC is really to expand that average age, right? To make sure that uh, anyone in a leadership role or aspiring for a leadership role has access to coaching. Okay, last question here. This one is kind of fun. Across all the coaching industry, what do you think is the average cost of a coaching session? And you can look by the responses, it is expensive. <laughs> So this is generally a one hour session. How much do you think it is on average? We've got 450s, 350s. Kind of sounds like I'm an auctioneer here. The answer is $350 per session. So um, part of the, the challenge of the coaching industry is access, right? How do we help folks? If it's the most widely used tool, how do we how do we expand that access beyond just being part of an organization, right? Make it accessible to people outside of those. So, well, hey, give yourselves a round of applause. That was um, that was really well done there. Hopefully, you get a sense of the coaching industry here at the GLC. We're really focusing on leadership coaching, and I wanted to share with you our definition of that because. There's lots of ways you can conceptualize coaching. I mean, we have a, you know, one of the most winning Division Three coaches on the call tonight. Um, the way we're framing coaching in this program is this. It's a partnership. So the coach and the client are partners together. We, we do what we can to eliminate any power dynamic. So whether you have, uh, you know, VIPs like Carol and Brian, uh, and many of other our coaches, they quickly state that they are partners with you, right? So they are along, uh, along accompanying you. And it's a thought-provoking and creative process, recognizing that your coach doesn't necessarily know where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. Again, you work on that together, right? So it's uh, through a lot of good conversation, questions, exploration, trying and experimenting new ways of, of thinking, that's really what the process is. And it's designed to be inspirational, right? So your coach is your greatest cheerleader, someone who believes in you, recognizes your potential, and they are there to help you think about what can be in the future. How can you be your best self? How can you grow into the person you want to become? And recognizing that this, you are a whole person, right? We are not just a professional uh, leader role. You are a whole person recognizing that they want to maximize that potential across all areas of your life. And the word maximize, I think, is important because we are all busy. And, you know, yes, we could do 
a two year leadership master's degree and probably learn a lot. But my guess is that that's a lot bigger commitment. So coaching is designed to be effective and efficient. So most of our coaching engagements last no more than really four to six months, recognizing that you want to accomplish a goal and do that as efficiently and effectively as possible. So that's the way we think about coaching here uh, in this program. And oftentimes we throw different words of different developmental relationships uh, out there. And I think this slide, uh, I just want to talk about this to share a little bit about how it might be different from other roles, right? And this is based on um, who is the expert? Is it the person receiving the, the help or the helper? And who is asking the questions? You can see on the bottom right quadrant here, we have mentor, trainer, consultant, manager. These are folks who generally have more expertise, more information, uh, more wisdom. Uh, you think about consultant, right? They're there to kind of give advice. And then you look across the, the diagram here, coach is, is not necessarily the expert uh, in the topic, right? The client, the piece of the person being coached they're the experts in themselves. They know themselves best. In four to six months, the coach couldn't really understand your situation, uh, your environment. They have to tr trust and believe that, that you know yourself the best, right? And the coach is going to be more facilitative. They're going to be asking questions, exploring those things. So this is how coaching is, is different. We currently have... 21 leadership coaches who are uh, volunteers. These are folks who have raised their hand to say, I believe in the power of coaching and helping a lot other alumni. And these are folks from all over the country, uh, folks who have been trained by the GLC to be coaches and from a wide variety of uh, industries and uh, even sort of demographics. And so these folks are willing and ready to, uh, to serve as, as coaches. And so what I want to do is kind of pause there in talking about the program and actually let our coaches share a little bit about who they are and what they do. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And Brian would love to hear from you about your experience as, as a coach and anything that you think would be great to share with the group. Sure, Andy, thank you. And and what a great kind of, you know, lead in there. I mean, to understand a little bit more about the program, I, I can tell, uh, you know, everybody tonight, I'll, I'll clearly say, when I first had the pleasure of getting involved with the GLC, it was in much more of a mentorship capacity. And so those engagements were twice as long as what we're talking about here from a coaching engagement perspective. And, you know, that was quite a commitment for the client, um, you know, to to be willing to engage. That meant, you know, at that point in time, two visits back to campus so that we were together live in person as part of that journey. And then fast forward and, and you know, really, I think to Andy's credit and, and the credit of those at the GLC, they recognized in order to kind of scale this great opportunity and to be, you know, much more effective at a time when perhaps clients need, you know, uh, a, a more direct, uh, more impactful opportunity, uh, you know, to hone some of the skills that we're discussing here, uh, it really kind of morphed over into, you know, this this coaching opportunity. I will quickly say, uh, and, and Charles, I'm going to put you on the spot, but I want you to be, I know you always will be, but feel free, you know, lift lift the uh, curtain a little bit to show the light where you know I come from that background of perhaps leaning a little bit more toward mentoring and so it was a bit of a retooling for me to you know understand understand the coaching uh, approach and mentality but it has made all the difference and I'm going to quickly say for me um, it has been such an opportunity to engage with our young alumni Charles being a great example of that who are off doing incredible things, whether that's in corporate America like Charles or in, you know, kind of postgraduate work. Um, and, you know, to recognize, because I myself, over the course of my career, have had the opportunity to 
you know, grow in a few different ways as far as operational roles, um, gaining you know, some additional responsibilities from a PL management or performance management perspective. And I will say to you, most organizations, I think Andy did a great job of leading in on this, um, <laughs> a lot of times you know, promotions happen and individuals gain additional responsibility because they are good tacticians, they're you know, potentially good at what they do. Uh, and not every organization has the resources or ability to invest in the training like we're talking about today from you know, a, a skills perspective. And so to think that the GLC um, you know, specifically and, and the college broadly have found opportunities to pair individuals, and, and you know, to Andy's point of the 21, we'll say credentialed coaches at, at the GLC, right? Um, because we've gone through this training, uh, you might be surprised at how many actually are in this line of work as their profession. So, you know, these are leadership coaches and, and my gosh, Carol, it doesn't get better than, uh, you know, uh, a well-awarded, um, you know, uh, either a team coach who has done incredible work um, and to see the fact that Carol's willing to give back, I feel like I pale in comparison. So, you know, to, to, to the various coaches who are out there. And for me, it's been a learning experience on my own journey, um, and it has helped me to grow and to, you know, kind of almost press myself as I have had the opportunity, like in Charles' case, interact with an individual who is doing wonderful things, you know, on his career path and comes with, a, you know, a handful of very pointed, very uh, well thought, you know, questions and and noting kind of the the kind of trajectory, Charles, that you were on when we first had the opportunity to connect. And, and I don't want to, I won't divulge anything. I'll let you kind of divulge maybe what led you, but I'll explain from my perspective in being paired with you. It was really interesting to get the chance to understand kind of what was driving thought process, um, where your goals um, were kind of leading you. And um, as we kind of maybe pressed in a few areas to think about, uh, you know, reframing how, how you might consider hosting conversations. Uh, but I say that to mean you drove all of that. And I just happened to be, you know, fortunate to be a sounding board. Uh, and I think that was one of the biggest kind of ahas for me in this process of you know, getting to work with clients was trying to step back, hold my tongue, you know, maybe a little bit as as more of a mentor and use use that, um, you know, to, to ask questions a little more than perhaps, you know, provide guidance. So I don't know how um, helpful that segment was. I'll pause there turn it to Carol, and then I'm sure I'll have epiphanies throughout that that hopefully we'll <laughs> be able to expand on. So I'm sorry. Well, that, oh, yeah, sure. Carol. No. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, I mean, I think you put it very eloquently and, and spot on. Um, you know, I... Uh, I share, uh, as, as you referenced, um, and my role at Gettysburg College for 30 years um, was coaching the women's lacrosse team at Gettysburg. And um, prior to that, I was coaching at another institution. So all told, I, I spent 40 years um, coaching. And I just had a big aha learning moment that um, there's a huge differential between the coaching that Andy referenced, and it was found in the trivia question. I did not get paid $350 for every practice that I had when I was coaching at Gettysburg. So uh, well, I'm the fool, I guess. Um, but in all, um, you know, joking aside, um, there there is a lot of differences, um, you know, in, in collegiate coaching or any kind of coaching. You know, there are many times where you're actually telling this, the, the athletes what to do and you can put hard, fast demands and um, challenges forward to them. Um, and certainly that was necessary at times, but I'd like to think that my athletes um, thought of me more as uh, the definition that Andy shared in that it is an exchange. It is helping people to become the, the very best uh, version of themselves and to become, you know, somebody that, they're aspiring to be and that 
through an experience with a group of people that they are um, realizing that it, they're in a place that's bigger than themselves and collectively they're going after and achieving goals. Um, so when I retired and, and Andy offered this opportunity to get involved, um, as one of you mentioned, I think it was Sam, how do you say no to that guy? First of all, um, I was delighted, delighted to be involved. And as Brian um, said, yeah, I had a lot of learning to do. Um, you know, I'm in my second year in coaching. I'm in the coaching program of the GLC. Um, I've just had one client thus far and we're both learning. And like you said, Brian, you know, a lot of it is um, listening. And the thing I love most about it and how I would have loved a program just like this is it is a space where it is completely disconnected from the people that you're interacting with in your employment and in your places of work where they know too much, right? Um, and this is a place where the focus is totally on you and your journey and your ambitions and your challenges. And it's an opportunity for you to really have a safe and open dialogue, free of judgment, free of consequences to talk about your whys and your wishes and your, your dreams and your challenges. Um, it's just outstanding. And to do it with someone that you know you have a connection with, it's Gettysburg, right? So uh, enough said there, um, is, is just an incredible opportunity. And, you know, I was traveling back from New York just, just this past Sunday. Um, and I was on the Amtrak and I was reflecting on you know my trip, but I was also like, oh, what's my week coming up? And I was like, oh, we have this, this event. And what it, Andy asked us to share what coaching looks like and what coaching feels like with the participants tonight. And I couldn't help but drawing the parallel between my time on the train and, um, in, in reality, like all of us are at different destinations and we're at different phases of our journey on this train. And a client that comes to the GLC and wants to have a coach is wanting to share like, here's the station I'm at, here's where I wanna go. And um, I could use some guidance. And I see the coach as like, we're the rails of the train. We're not, going to tell you where to go or when to get off or um, what route to take. We're there to just guide that train. You're the conductor of it. And we're just the one that, you know, keeps you hopefully moving forward um, and kind of helps you stay on track. It would be the best um, analogy of what coaching looks like and, and what it feels like, at least in my short experience so far. That's brilliant, Carol and Brian. Thank you for for sharing. I did did want to just provide an opportunity for folks to ask questions of our coaches. We we will hear from Charles and Jacqueline in a minute, but let me pause there. Are there any questions about the the the, the uh, story shared by Brian and Carol that that you want to to bring out right now? I had a question. Brian was talking about mentoring being like a more involved process coming to campus twice a year, but coaching seems maybe perhaps like a, a less time commitment. And maybe this is one of your agenda items, but I was wondering if you might be able to clarify that. Yeah. Brian, do you want to give it a shot? Sure, and Andy, please keep me keep me on the rails. Keep me on Carol's rails here, <laughs> um, because you know I, what I would say, Sarah. You know, uh, and forgive me because that might have been you know kind of a, a little bit of a, a rough transition. Um, I would say so when I first was involved with the GLC, there was a program called the Young Alumni Leadership Program, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that was a nine month commitment uh, that. Um, a client and a mentor, a mentee mentor would be paired over the course of that nine month period. And we would be, we would come to campus for kind of a kickoff and uh, nearly then a wrap up session. And then in between, 
we would meet periodically, uh, you know, to talk through uh, kind of whatever the areas of focus from a leadership development perspective, uh, the mentee was, was you know, anxious to um, dive into. And what I think is so great about the coaching, the skills coaching program is that as, as Andy notes, this commitment, and um, I'll, I'll, you know, defer to Charles and to Jacqueline as well. Um, what I think we found was A, um, from a scale perspective, the fact that we have 21 coaches is great. We're on target to, you know, increase that number as well. How can we have the largest impact with, you know, that community because there's a, a large demand, uh, you know, for interest. So if we could kind of make this a little bit more, um, you know, compact to the point, um, there could be you know, one uh, client that may have multiple um, coaching or skills development needs. And so maybe at one point in time, we're together focused on, you know, maybe developing one of those skills a little more uh, in depth. Then maybe we have a pause. Uh, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but if memory serves, I think that is part of the idea that, you know, a, a client could then re-engage for yet another um, development opportunity. Yeah, and to, to build on that, Brian, so Sarah, to, to respond to your question there, the coaching engagement is based on uh, your goals. So the moment that you are matched with a coach, in your first session, you talk about what are your goals, and then you map out how often, how frequent you meet together. Most coaching sessions happen virtually just because it's easier and uh, you know not location bound. But we do have some coaches and clients who have met in person. And generally coaches and clients meet every two to three weeks for about an hour over a four to six month period. Again, it's very customized to you and your needs, but that's generally what we found from the, each coaching engagement. Great, thank you. Super. Well, we'll have some more chance for questions towards the end. I now want to turn it over to Charles to share a little bit from the client perspective uh, what what your story has been. Yeah, thanks so much, Andy. And uh, Coach Cantelli, that's a great example, by the way. I didn't think uh, that's a timely one with trains and staying on the track and that it's your job as the client for when you're getting off and when you're getting back on to what Brian was saying as well, that that coaching journey doesn't have to stop at that four months. They can be re-engaged later on, getting back on that train. I thought that was a good example. <clears throat> and I think for me, it would be helpful to provide some context for why I was looking for coaching in the first place. So I graduated Gettysburg 2020. I went into sales for AT&T um, and I was an indiv individual contributor, account executive um, for two years. And I was living in New York City, and I had, I had a really great experience. And I got a call from my first boss that I had at AT&T that there was going to be a manager spot open at their headquarters in Dallas. And <clears throat> I'm, I was only 24 years old at the time. And most people who were in that role had much more tenure than me. So I, I felt really, really lucky to be getting that call to get that opportunity. And uh, I hopped all over it and I moved halfway across the country from New York City to Dallas, Texas without setting foot in Texas. And I'm a couple months into this role and I've got a myriad of people that I'm uh, managing and it's a team of 12 and it's from people that are twice my age that I'm managing to people that are a few years younger and everybody in between. And this email came out in January about this, this coaching opportunity with the GLC and being able to be a client. And um, I signed up to go to the info session and that same learning model that Andy put up a little bit ago about the spectrum of what coaches are, facilitators, uh, mentors, and stuff like that. I had never thought about it quite like that, but I, I needed a coach because I was going through situations that I'm dealing with for the first time that who, you know, I felt like I could have used somebody who had experience and that had dealt with people at this corporate level. So I could, um, you know, if, that someone could be a soundboard to help me out. And Andy could not have picked a, a better match for me with Brian. And I know that Brian and I are talking a lot about each other on, <laughs> on this call, but I met with Brian for the very first time. His energy is absolutely contagious. And he went through and he barely wanted to talk about himself. Like I, I was trying to get 
info just for the introduction. And right out the get, he was trying, he was, a, he was being a coach. And he asked me questions for what do I want to get out of this long term? What are some issues that I'm dealing with immediately that I think that I could talk through? And as time went on, we started having biweekly conversations over this time period. And Brian was very thoughtful and he made me think about what my answer should be. And he did a great job of not letting his personal biases get in because we all have biases where we're coming from in our particular lens get into what he thinks I should do or shouldn't do. It is rather, well, have you thought about it from this perspective and how it could impact this other person involved? And through those conversations, I started journaling more frequently um, after some of our sessions and things that I would do with other people. Um, and fast forward through this entire time, I'm 18 months into being a manager. I've had 48 different direct reports because I'm uh, managing a development program in which I'm having people go out into their full-time roles every four to six months. And I can't tell you how many times I called Brian about a situation that I was having that I just needed some guidance and he helped me formulate that answer. So I think that I, I couldn't have asked for a better coach. I think Brian was asking earlier, you know, how much of a, a coach was he? He did a great job being a coach. And I think that definition of being a mentor and being a coach and facilitator that Brian did a great job of making sure he made a conscious effort. Every time he got on the call, you could see him sometimes having a natural reaction and taking it right back and, and giving um, that thought provoking question on that. So if for any of those people on this call that are, are looking for a coaching experience, everybody has a different part of their journey that they're at right now that they could require coaching, whether you're an individual contributor, whether you're getting into a leadership role or whatever that might be. And if you have the right coach, they'll help you get to where you want to go. So uh, I want to say thanks to Brian and Andy for that. And uh, I'll be sending that over to Jacqueline. Well, thanks. That's a great tale. Um, so I'll add mine to it in the interest of time. I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, so I actually worked two roles. So I graduated from um, the college in 2010 and sort of kind of found my way in a variety of different industries. Um, by the time I landed in events, I was just like not knowing that it was a real job. Um, and I kind of found my way into a nonprofit. And so currently I'm in a project manager role at the U.S. Green Building Council. And I also am the managing partner at a consulting firm called Bulk's Group, which is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. In both of those roles, I plan events for nonprofits, for corporate clients, for individuals who are solopreneurs and need some branding support. Um, and I came into the role com or into my coaching relationship with Paul, completely burnt out, completely disillusioned. Like I was ready to quit all of my jobs and just like needed a light to show me, like really to shine a light on back to me so that I could see what is my path forward and like really take the emotion out of it. Um, and so Paul, I'll back up a little when I first reached out to Andy and, you know, we had a very real conversation about like, who is your ideal coach? What does that person look like? And I said, well, I need someone who is the complete opposite of me. And to me, that means a white male. And I know that you have tons of white males who are coaches. So find the best one for me and match me up because I'm talking to white males, you know, obviously what I'm in the nonprofit and in our leadership team and trying to leverage those relationships um, and some of the unconscious bias on both ends and all the things. So it was really good to have um, Paul's support as I navigated some challenges um, that I was experiencing both in the workplace, in both workplaces, I'll say. Um, so Paul and I have been working together now for about a year. And much like um, Charles mentioned and Brian, it's been very much a symbiotic relationship it has definitely turned into a mentor kind of relationship. So we have been talking again for about a year now um, and we're actually looking to do some work together and partner together because there's some synergies in the work that Paul does and some synergies in what I bring to, um, to bring to his projects. So we've been able to kind of work together and toss around concepts and see what could work or stick. Um, share resources amongst each other. He'll take a look at things that I've prepared and give me feedback and like poke holes and things. And as a planner, I always need people to poke holes because like I'll do a dump 
And I'm like, okay, this is what I got. And like, I'm done. Like, tell me what I'm missing and we'll go from there. And he's been really great and really supportive. Um, again, making me think. So it's very much putting a mirror up to the things that I'm saying and like asking, well, why do you feel like that? And why are you thinking like that? And really has helped me kind of uh, combat imposter syndrome a bit. Um, and just some of the things that I have carried into my, prof my professional life that exists in my personal life. And so it's just been really um, good. And now at this point, I mean, I'm still burnt out because who's not going to be burnt out from working two jobs simultaneously. But, you know, there's that. Um, but he is really helping me kind of chart my path forward. So I'm at a point now where um, I'm looking to open up my own shop and try to segue some of my current work into uh, foundational clients or like retainer clients. And so he's been really helpful in just crafting like the next step. Um, so at any stage, I think, you know, in your mid thirties and your early twenties, like this is the prime time to like really be talking to people who have had the experience. Um, but also like we're all planning to live in a world that we don't know what it's going to look like. And so I think having the perspective of people who know and have experienced and like credentialed experience, right? Like they know very tangible tools and tricks. Um, that can help you uncover some of those things, like Charles mentioned, the journaling and just stopping to reflect. Um, in addition, sorry, this is not about coaching, but this is about GLC. So I took the um, mindful meditation. It was like a mindful leadership class. So I took that in tandem with starting my relationship with Paul. And so it all kind of worked really well together to have like tangible tools, tangible systems and things that you can put in your toolbox and use in different scenarios. So huge advocate of the program. I'm really hoping that I can pay it forward and become a coach so that when there's people who want some, someone opposite of them, if there's a white male who wants someone opposite of them, I can be the opposite of them. So here we are. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank you, Charles. Um, really brought some life to this coaching uh, endeavor. Uh, before we break, I did want to provide one more uh, opportunity for questions. So based on hearing Charles and Jacqueline's story, what, what question does that generate for you? I have a question. What is the, what would be the first step? Like if you were to do anything, like where, where do you go? Is there a question or like a, a question you are to bring with you or like something you're bring, bringing to like the first interaction? So. Do you want that first, Andy, or do you want? Yeah, if, if you want to jump in, absolutely. All right, Charles, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to be like, Brian, I'm going to jump in and you hold my six, okay? Um, so initially, like Angie will have you complete this form and it really just kind of outlines what are your goals? What are you hoping to get out of the experience? And so he'll share that with your coach. And really the first session is like a meet and greet. Like, who are you? Who is this person? What is the background and like setting that kind of connection before content, like Andy said earlier. Um, and so to that point, like literally, I'm not going to say I treated it like therapy, but it was like, what, what is the like? biggest issues that I'm facing right now because I was so burnt out and I'm so just like I will put my hands on everybody and like you need to help me not do that and so he really like <laughs> helped me come up with ways that I can solve my problems and like really get take the emotion out of it so much so what I would say is like think about if there's very specific scenarios or challenges that you're facing start with those because then it's kind of like an onion you can peel back some of the real underlying issues when you start with some of the big things that are like plaguing you. Yeah, to build off of what Jacqueline was saying, um, one I did a thought exercise going into this. Um, I like to read a lot of self-help books and I, I like to check out different methodologies and things like that. So I read this book called The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma, also wrote uh, The Monk That Sold His Ferrari. Lots of really good stuff in there. 
if you guys haven't read it, but there's one part in there that's talking about climbing mountains and you have to s- decide in your life's journey, which mountain you want to climb. And if you are unsure, let's take this career oriented for a second. If you're unsure what you want in your career and you continue to move up this mountain, but you're not sure that's the mountain that you want to achieve at some point, you have to get off that mountain, go go find the one you want, even if it's a restart, even if it's something else that you want to be passionate in. So I would say even a step before going in for those issues with Jacqueline, I think that you have to establish with yourself, what mountain do I want to climb? And is it worth climbing? And then once you figure that out, I think you can take it from there. I just have to throw a comment in because Charles truly, and this is, this is a very sincere statement because I've had the great opportunity to work with a number of different clients. I can say very clearly and very sincerely, you came into this process way more prepared than most. And that, that, piece of advice that you just gave, I think is so beneficial because it is it is very common for a client to come into this situation after completing the application process to think that um, the client wishes to focus on you know one skill set to develop when in fact we start to peel back layers of the onion and we find actually you know that's the wrong mountain right and it takes us time to do that. So the fact that you invested and that you just you know shared that, I will tell you without a doubt, um, I feel like we hit the ground running so much faster because you did that. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate you, man. Was the Friday Club by Lombardi? Uh, It's 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. Okay, I was on Goodreads and I saw two different authors, so thanks. And it's not just a book that tells you to get up at 5 a.m. every day. It's it's a it's a story that and it has lots of great lessons and learning models in it that I think is awesome. So I highly recommend. Beautiful. Great question, Diana. Thank you. Any final questions before we wrap up here? Andy, just a quick question. So in hearing Jacqueline and Charles stories and engagements, obviously they were looking for different things and, and at different points in their career. You and your team, when you're matching uh, clients with coaches, like what does that look like? Can, obviously, we probably fill out an application, blah, 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 but I just would like to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, it's very simple, Sarah, actually. We match on on really two, two principles. One is availability, recognizing we have volunteer coaches. We uh, And we do intake at any point throughout the year. It really is based on who is available. Uh, the good news is we have a lot of great uh, coaches who you know have time to commit to this. And the next is any preferences. So Jacqueline referenced in we do it in after you fill out the form, we do a thirty minute intake meeting, which just so I can help get a sense of what your goals are, so that you know we feel like you're ready to be coached. To, to Brian's point. Um, and I ask in that, you know, uh, do you have any specific preferences? Recognizing that Gettysburg's a small community, right? So you may know some of these coaches. You may have had someone like Janet Morgan Riggs as your professor at some point, right? I'm sure that was a good relationship, but maybe you want to try someone else, right? So we always confirm the match with you. So I'll come back and say, based on your preferences, here's who's available and who I'd recommend. Do you have any concerns? You don't need to tell me why, um, but if you do, I would go back and find you another another coach. And then as soon as you say yes, that's when the coach re- reaches out to begin the engagement. That's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it. Well, folks, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you all tonight. Um, let's give uh, Brian, Carol, Charles, and Jacqueline a round of applause for spending their time as volunteers to share the story. Thank you. Um, we will follow up with an email with more information about if you if you feel ready to do the intake form. We have coaches available. Would love to, to have that conversation. Uh, and thanks so much. And Jasmine, is there anything else we need to do to, or Phoebe to wrap up here? No, just thanks for coming on and uh, hope to see you at uh, the last alumni J-term 
session, which will be held tomorrow evening. This was great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.